definitions are something that every mathematician has to work with. If you want to tell me what a line, or a function, or a limit is, then you'll have to rigorously define it. On top of that, there's usually more than one definition that you'll have to remember, either from independent research, being more useful in different contexts, or even just because one is unintuitive or restrictive, you'll probably come across many different ways to define an object. In this video, I want to go on a journey of definitions for something called a graph, going from intuitive but restrictive to general but unintuitive, and then a general definition that regains some of our intuition. Graph theory has a naming convention that I'm not too fond of, because a graph is both a plot of a function, like you're seeing now, and this. These graphs should probably be called something else, like networks or nets or something, but I guess that's just something we'll have to deal with. The structure of a graph comes from its vertices along with the edges connecting those vertices. The edges sometimes have a direction, where you can only travel in one way, or the edge is undirected, and you can travel freely in either direction. They're especially good at describing connections and relationships between objects. It doesn't matter where in space they are, or how long the edge is, just that there is an edge at all. This first definition is one that is taught in most introductory graph theory textbooks. For this, we start with a set, which for us will be this finite set with four elements, and we call this the vertex set. Visually, we can represent this set by placing down four vertices so that there is a vertex for each element of V. Now we want to connect the vertices together with edges. To do this, we look at all the unordered pairs where each coordinate is one of our vertices. The pair tells us which two vertices are being connected by an edge, and to form the edge set, we just choose as many of these pairs as we want. So let's go back to our vertices and see what this edge set looks like. To start, we'll isolate one pair, say 1, 3. This pair represents the edge connecting vertex 1 to vertex 3, and is visually represented like this. We rinse and repeat for all the pairs in the edge set, and boom, you have a graph. The problem I have with this definition is that it restricts many types of graphs that we would want to make. As an example, what if I want two vertices to be connected by more than one edge? After all, couldn't it be possible for two vertices to be related in more than one way? Using the definition we just made, we would have to label them something like this. But there is a problem. Sets can't have repeating elements, so putting these both in a set isn't actually possible. You can make additions or amendments to this definition in order to add multiple edges, but that feels like the mathematical equivalent of shoving a square peg into a round hole. So why not fix it directly? A better way to deal with this problem is to have the edge set be a completely different set, untethered by the vertex set. From this, we get the half-edge definition of a graph. We start in an identical way with a set of vertices, but instead of looking at unordered pairs to define the edges, we construct an entirely new set of something called half edges. Currently, these two sets have no relation to each other, and essentially we have a lot of different pieces to build a graph, but need to attach everything together. The perfect object in mathematics to relate two sets is the function, and we'll need a couple. Firstly, we have a map which takes a half edge and attaches it to a vertex. If we do this for all of the half edges, we end up with a bunch of vertices with spokes coming off of them. And now we need to bring these spokes together to make a fully functional graph. So we make another function which takes a half edge and attaches it to another half edge, in total turning two half edges into a full edge. We can simplify this diagram a bit and it looks and acts exactly like the graph we made in the previous definition. I do really like this definition as it allows for graphs with multiple edges in a very precise and elegant way. One question I had after seeing this definition was, why create half edges? Can't we just have a better map that tells us which two vertices an edge is attached to? The problem, as it turns out, is that there isn't a way to do this without imparting some direction to the edge. 
the function would have to encode a starting point and an endpoint to the edge, which is the same as saying the edge goes in this direction. So how would we get around this? With our final definition of a graph. We start just as before with a vertex set, and this time just a regular edge set. We define a function that maps an edge to two vertices. Notice how if we map an edge to an ordered pair, we're making a decision as to the direction of that edge. Specifically, it starts here and ends here, so the edge is directed this way. Doing this for every edge gives us a graph, but it's directed. And we kind of want to ignore this direction, but we have to be rigorous about it. So let's just focus on one edge. The way we are going to do this is to create another edge going in the opposite direction as our first edge and append our edge set with more elements. Now it looks like we have more problems than we did before, but don't worry. Calling this edge E and the other E bar, we can define a function that sends one edge to the other. Identifying these two edges together allows us to treat them as the same. Since this newly formed edge obtains both directions, they cancel out and we can treat it as a directionless edge. If we repeat this process for all of the edges in our original directed graph, we end up with an undirected graph. I find this definition to be such an elegant solution to our problem. It is also kind of intuitively how we already think of an edge. You can travel in one direction on an edge that's directed, but both ways with an edge that is undirected. This definition is formalizing that concept by literally creating an edge that goes in both directions simultaneously. When it comes to learning a new topic in mathematics, it can be kind of daunting to see that 10 different authors use 10 different definitions for an object. What's important is to ask what that author is trying to achieve by defining it that way, and understanding the intuition behind their choices. Definitions are the lifeblood of mathematical thinking, and understanding them is important. More important, though, is understanding why we use them. Thank you.